It's coffee time, it's coffee time, it's the one part chef drinking coffee in time. And that's still crap. Welcome to Coffee Time, the chat show here on the One Pot Chef blog where I answer questions sent in by you. And if you've got a question for the next edition of Coffee Time, simply leave it in the comment section underneath this video on YouTube. Before we get started, there's a quick little announcement. I've decided to put Coffee Time back to its normal monthly schedule. I have been doing them every two weeks, however, I've decided that after a bit of an experiment, the two-week thing isn't quite working out the way I was expecting. The whole idea was to try and make the coffee time episodes shorter because they were like running to like an hour and I figured that if I did them every two weeks it would make them shorter but if anything it's actually made them longer because now I'm doing two one hour things a month instead of just one so um, I decided to do it just monthly from now on so I apologize to those of you who are disappointed in not getting it every two weeks but um, realistically it just has makes it so much easier on me production wise because it does take a long time to sit here like for an hour making a video and then I've got to uh, code the video and edit it and whatnot so it makes things easier if I'm just doing it once a month all right guys we'll get past that and move on to the questions for this t month I suppose <laughs> okay first question comes from killing 4b flowers what is your favorite type of coffee um I don't know, probably a mild roasted coffee, something that's got a lot of flavour but isn't like overly bitter. Um, I've got this fabulous coffee machine that has these little pods that you drop in that has the perfect amount of coffee in it and comes out absolutely sensational every time. But um, when I'm out and about, I just I tend to go for something that's sort of mild, not too strong. I don't mind a strong coffee, but I find that a lot of places that make a strong coffee will also make them very, very bitter. And I don't like that bitter, sort of slightly burnt flavour in coffee. So, yeah. Um, Lucy B, can you do a video with your partner? No, it's as simple as that. I've had a lot of people ask me this um, over the last sort of couple of weeks. Um, my partner doesn't like being on camera. He doesn't have any interest in doing what I do. So, um, and I can understand that. I mean, it's, it's very much like me. Like, I wouldn't want to go to his work and sort of do what he does for a living. Um, and he doesn't really want to do what I do for a living. So he doesn't appear in videos and he's, he's quite happy not to. So that's, that's sort of, anyone sort of expecting that to happen in the, the near future is going to be disappointed. It's not going to happen. So, um, yeah, he's, he's quite happy. <laughs> uh, Naruto Uzumaki. What do you think happens when we die? Ooh, that's a bit deep and meaningful. Um, personally, my opinion is nothing happens when you die. I think that sort of we live, we're born, we live, we die, and that's it. I don't think there is an afterlife or anything like that. I, that being said, I could be wrong. I mean, a fact is nobody knows what happens when you die. Um, no one's ever died and come back to sort of say, hey, guess what? You were wrong. Um, yeah, I, I personally don't think there is anything after death. So that's that's my opinion. Um, Licho 3440, do you drink soda pop? What is your favourite soda? Um, well, we call it soft drink in Australia. Um, probably there's this pineapple one that I found recently that's like insanely sweet, but it's really, really fruity and refreshing and I really like it. Um, it's just a no brand type thing, but it's really, really nice. I always have a bottle of that in the fridge for when it's a hot day and I feel like a glass, so yeah. But I also like Coca-Cola and things like that. But, um, and red creaming soda. I haven't had that for a while. Oh, am I going, well, you're giving me bad, you're a bad influence. You're making me want to go buy creaming soda, bad. <laughs> uh, Ninja Dude, 1021. Pick either of the two questions or answer both. Okay. Would you ever consider opening your own restaurant or cooking school? No. No, I don't think I'd ever do either of those. I mean, I think what I do on YouTube, I'm quite happy doing that. I, I don't want to own a restaurant or do anything like that because the amount of stress and work that would go into it would be just crazy. Um, as for a cooking school, um, what I do practically is a cooking school. I don't, and I can do it in my own time. There's no scheduling or anything like that. I just do things as I feel like I want to do it. So that works for me. It gives me an incredible freedom uh, that many jobs don't sort of usually give you so um i'm quite happy where i am with that uh will you ever come visit your friends here in long island new york if we pay for you and your partner's first class round trip airline tickets and hotel stay 
The catch is that you will be worshipped by all of us bachelors or recently married couples for teaching us how to cook, and you might have to escape to leave the island. That is the sweetest and creepiest offer ever. <laughs> escape the island. <laughs> the island. Um, um, I do want to come to New York. Um, it's one of my sort of list of places I definitely want to go. Um, yeah, it would be great to actually go there. I'm not sure about being worshipped. I mean, like, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I would definitely love to go over there. It's the one thing I regret about the trip to Los Angeles recently was that the schedule was really, really tight and I didn't get an opportunity to do a, a meetup with people while I was over there. I would have loved to have done it, but um, the schedule was really tight and I had very little free time. What free time I did, I was trying to sort of just relax and recuperate because I'd had a very long flight. The days of filming were extremely long and very hard on my back. So even if I had done a, a meetup, I probably wouldn't have been in much of a condition to sort of entertain people or anything like that. But um, I would love to come back over there and I would love to go to New York at some point. That would be fabulous. And Long Island, um, I love your eyes too. <laughs> Long Island Ice Tea, bang bang. <laughs> but yeah, so that, that would be fun. Um, two packs, why don't you have air conditioning? I assume that's a reference to the last video. Oh yeah, because it was really hot when I was recording the last video. I've got air conditioning, I don't have it in this room. And I don't want to have to lift, literally transfer the computer to the, another room in order just to sit in front of the air conditioner. So I just have this little fan behind me, which I don't need today because it's freezing cold. But um, yeah, I haven't got like central air or anything like that. I've only got air conditioning in the living room. So yeah. Um, song Makers Cry. Hi, David. You said you like true crime books. What are some good ones you are so enjoyable to watch? Thank you. Um... I generally read the compilation type crime books, the ones like sort of World's Deadliest Executions or <laughs> World's Deadliest Executions, like World's Worst Serial Killers or whatever like that. Um, people have often, I think I've mentioned like reading serial killer books and stuff in the past, so people have thought that was rather creepy of me, but I think it's more the fact that I find it incredibly fascinating, the psychology behind these kind of crimes, but even more so the the information about the forensics and things like that, about how they actually catch these people by finding this tiny little carpet fibre on the bottom of a shoe that they find at the bottom of a lake, and they can actually use that to prove that someone was somewhere at a certain time. And I find that fascinating. And there's heaps of those books. Um, I recently downloaded a whole bunch of them uh, from the bookstore on iTunes, and I've been sitting there reading them every night before bed, which admittedly probably isn't a great idea like sort of like it does seem a little odd that i'd be sitting there reading about sort of horrendous sort of murder and crime and death and sort of serial killings just before sleepy time but what can i say <laughs> it's like never judge a person by what they read because they may judge you by what you read that's what i say so um yeah go onto itunes and check them out there's heaps of them in their true crime section so go and check it out um Rebecca McIntyre. Hello, darling. Okay, so this is the first time asking questions for coffee time. So excited. So, David, you mentioned you read crime books. Oh, we've just been there. Um, which authors' books would you read? Do you have a favourite? Um, good question. I, I'm not even sure who writes the, the books that I read. They're like a compilation thing, so I don't know if they were actually written by the same author or not. But um, as I said, if you've got um, access to the iTunes bookstore, go and have a look around you'll find heaps of them on there uh also if you could witness any event past present or future what would it be lastly i'm irish and we've also we've got a lot of traditional irish dishes do you know of any or would you like to make some time and do you have any favorites okay um well we'll go to the first question first if you could witness any event past present or future what would it be um well, I don't know. Um, past, um, I'd love to see how the statues on Easter Island were built. That would be pretty cool for a past thing because, like, they're enormous, giant sort of... What are they called? The Moai, I think they're called. The Moai statues. And they're just like these giant sort of statues all over the island. And um, 
it's very difficult to see how a very small population could have devoted so much time and resources and manpower into making these things. And it would be interesting to see it. Like the pyramids, it would be lovely to see how the pyramids were built, although I get the impression it was a lot to do with a lot of slaves and a lot of big whips. So hopefully not, though. Maybe sort of it was aliens. Who knows? <laughs> um, present... Um, I don't know, I can see pretty much any present thing any time, can't I? As for the future, um, I would love to see human beings sort of getting past all the sort of cultural and social issues that we currently have and just actually uniting as a people. That would be nice. Um, I don't see that happening in my lifetime. I think that things like war and... Um, dispossession and things like that will continue for a while, which I think is sad. I think it would be lovely to see the human race move on to the next level and evolve. And um, that would probably the thing I'd like to see is, is us all at peace. That would be good. Um, as for traditional Irish dishes, um, I can't say I have a lot of experience with Irish cuisine, to be honest, but... Um, Definitely love the old Irish stews with lamb and carrots and potato and stuff like that. Um, I will often make sort of an Irish stew type thing at winter because I'll do it in the slow cooker and I'll have this giant glut, glut? A giant glut of stew. I'm not sure if that's the correct word, but I love the word glut, glut. <laughs> A giant glut of stew and... Yeah, I'll make this huge amount of stew and then I can sort of portion it out and put it in the freezer and then I can just get it out whenever I want rather than um, having to go to the sort of go to the kitchen and go, oh, what am I cooking for dinner tonight? Oh, I don't have to. I've got this glut of stew. <laughs> glut. <laughs> I love the word glut. It's my new word of the day. I'm going to use glut as much as I can in this video. Um, the Princess of Random. What is your favourite movie? Love you, chef. Um... I don't know. Good question. Favourite movie. I've got a lot of sort of favourite movies, so, like, it's really hard to tell. Um, a long time, my favourite movie was, oddly enough, Thelma and Louise, and I'm not even sure why. Like, I don't can't say I totally relate to the characters in it or anything like that. I just really found it to be an enjoyable movie. It was, it was thought-provoking and... Um, it was just a really well-scripted film. It was really, really good. Um, I don't like modern movies these days. I find them all really sort of rehashes of other stuff or prequels or sequels or reimaginings of stuff that's been done a thousand times. And I don't know. I do want to go and see that Hitchcock film. And I missed it at the cinema. I'm waiting for it to come out on DVD because the one with Anthony Hopkins playing Alfred Hitchcock, I heard that that was absolutely sensational, and I sadly didn't get a chance to see it while it was at the cinema, so I will definitely have to go and have a look at that. I don't know, but I, I don't know. I don't know if I have a specific favourite movie. Hmm, I'll have to have a think about that. Uh, ASMR Badger. Hey, Dave, love all your vids. I'm a straight guy, but I think Pierce Brosnan is a damn good-looking man. Mm, he certainly is. I was just wondering, if you had to choose a woman as a partner or girlfriend, who would it be? I'm not really sure. That's the thing. Oh, God. It's really hard because, like, I have never really had any kind of attraction to women at all. And so, like, I can look at a woman and go, yeah, it, it, she's pretty. Like, she's very sort of attractive and her hair, you know, isn't skanky or whatever. It looks really nice. I said really awful saying this. Oh, God. But there's nothing there. Like, I just don't... Like, I could say the same thing about a lamp post or a tree or whatever, and say, so, like, you know what, that's a really attractive tree, but I couldn't imagine having a sexual relationship with one. Um, but, yeah, as when it comes to sort of, like, I don't know, I suppose if I was to sort of take that sort of out of the equation and just go for somebody that was actually, like, obviously intelligent and interesting and thought-provoking, I have no idea. Oh, God. You've really stumped me with this one, actually, because I'm really not sure, because, um... I'm assuming I'll have to pick somebody famous, because, like, unless you happen to be, sort of, know Pierce Brosnan very well, in which case that's a very creepy thing to say. <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, 
I could see Angelina Jolie because she's actually got a sort of a masculine presence to her. Like, she's obviously very feminine. She's very, very beautiful. But she's got that sort of masculine walks into a room, I am here sort of look to her. And she's very statuesque. And, yeah, oh, God, I've never sounded so gay in my life. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Pick a famous woman. Probably would be. Nigella. We'll go for Nigella because bitch can cook. Gotta love her. And, yeah, and she, my God, she comes out with some saucy dialogue sometimes. So, yeah, she would probably go with me because she's got a dirty mind just like me. There we go. Nigella for the win. There we go. <laughs> and may I wish you all the luck in the world with your relationship with Pierce Brosnan. <laughs> oh, glut. <laughs> oh, it's... Uh, Alicia Sto Stoyan or Stolen? Stoyan. Please take us to another... Thing. Uh, could you make videos like when you go food shopping, eating out at your favourite restaurant, do you drink coffee or tea? Um, I have done a video doing the food shopping. Um, I've never really done one eating at a restaurant or anything because I must admit I don't go to restaurants very often these days. Um, as for tea and coffee, I drink both. I don't drink tea very often, but I do drink it now and again when I'm in the mood. Usually at night as a relaxant, which is odd because it's actually got more caffeine than coffee, but it does relax me. Um, yeah, so there we go. <laughs> uh, Shiloh Tumanuvo, I hope I said that correctly. When you were in LA, was it weird driving on the left side? Um, oh, you mean the car? Yes. It, that was really disorienting, actually, because... And I felt like such a tit the first couple of days because I'd like got the remote for the car and I go blip blip and I instantly by instinct go to the right hand side and get in the car and I had a very sort of absolutely fabulous moment where I'd get into the car and go some bastard stole on the steering wheel and I've got no I don't know what to do like I'm there sort of go oh god I can't believe I've done this and then you have to sheepishly get out of the car and then go around the other side and like there's always somebody there to witness it going <laughs> stupid foreigner <laughs> So, like, it happened several times, but after a couple of days, it, it, it seemed to be sort of uh, quite second nature, which actually was really awkward when I came back to Australia, because then the opposite happened. I'd go click, click, and then instantly go to the left-hand side, and then go, some bastard's still on the steering wheel. So, yeah, I think maybe they need to split the difference. Perhaps we should all just have cars with a steering wheel in the middle. That would make it easier. <laughs> um, cooking with Missy. When will your Tastemade videos or Tastemade recipe videos appear online? I'm sorry if it's already up, have been busy the last few days. Um, good question. There's been a delay with the production. Um, I'm not actually editing or putting the videos together. I was just sort of in them. And they're currently going through post-production now. But um, I did see a rough edit the other day of one of the videos and it's looking fantastic. So I can't say exactly when because I haven't been told it yet, but I've been told so that it should be sometime in the next sort of month or so, hopefully. Um, we've had a few delays, but it's all nearly done, and I'll, I'll let you know. Trust me, there will be publicity. You'll know about it, whether you follow me on Facebook, um, Twitter or Facebook or Google+, Plus or here on YouTube. You'll know it when it's coming, so <laughs> stay tuned. Um, ah, another one from Cooking with Missy. What are your favourite drinks, uh, as in with a good meal... You fill up a glass of what drink loaded with ice. Uh, would like to hear something non-alcoholic as well. Um, I can't say I drink a lot of alcoholic stuff with food. Um, I will occasionally have a glass of wine with dinner, but it's not very... That's very, very rarely. It's usually when I go out to a restaurant or something, and that's very rare as well. Um, generally, if I'm having a... I actually tend to drink a lot of water these days, and I tend to usually have a bottle, like a bottle, bottled water with me right now. I tend to have um, bottled water throughout the day and I usually have it with meals if I'm at home. Mm. But um, if I'm out and about somewhere, it'll probably be a soft drink of some kind, usually Coca-Cola or something. So, yeah. Um, so meant Ramlal. I, I apologise if I've mispronounced that. Uh, I've noticed that your videos have changed in the last years. Nowadays, you don't have a catchy intro. Why is that? Is there a specific rule while working with YouTube partners regarding presentations? Um, 
I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. I try to make my intros as catchy as possible, but um, there's no specific rule. Maybe maybe it's just the fact that I've made like 350 cooking videos over the last couple of years and sort of there's only so many ways you can say, hey, look, it's a cake. So, yeah. Um, what effect did your visit on the USA have on your view of the One Pot Chef? Um, if anything, it probably expanded my horizons as to what I can do with the format. Um, it's really hard to describe exactly what I'm talking about because the videos that I made with Tastemade have not gone online yet, but um, the way the videos were produced, um, the equipment used, how certain techniques were applied to filming and recording and things like that, um, it's shown me how... Um, where the show could go from this point on. And I, it's really hard to describe, but I'm, I'm really under sort of strict orders not to um, give away a lot of information. Um, last question. As a fan, would you like my Facebook profile photo while reading this question during the next coffee time? Then I can show my friends how thoughtful you are. I would appreciate that. Um... I have no idea how to get to your Facebook profile. I would have to go and search it on Facebook and I'm, I'm like in the middle of recording a video. But um, I think the fact that I've read out your questions and answered them is thoughtful enough, mate. So, um, yeah. Uh, next question. Uh, Habe Mustubrex? Habe, Habe Mustubrex? I don't know. What is the ultimate romantic food, including dessert, to make for your loved one? Well, in my case, my loved one is very easily suited and a bowl of pasta and a lemon cheesecake is pretty much the key to his heart. Um, yeah, because those basically, if I made like lasagna and made lemon cheesecake for dessert, yeah, I, I pretty much own him. Like, <laughs> I'm so glad he's not here to hear that. He'd kill me. Um, <laughs> Uh, guitar keys four. What's your favourite condiment or sauce? Um, I found this barbecue sauce recently that's sort of like a, a smoky honey barbecue that was really, really gorgeous. And I'm really disappointed because it's a limited edition and it won't be around forever because I've discovered it and I'm loving it and I just, I won't be able to have it forever. All the good things always a limited edition. I don't know why. So... Who can say? Um, Mr. Reef 90, hello. Love your New York accent. You must be the only one. Um, what's something you haven't cooked or made yet that you really want to do? Um, there's a lot of things I, ha I would like to do, but I haven't done for the cooking channel. And it basically comes down to logistics. Um, generally, when it comes to cooking videos, at least in my experience, if the video goes for more than about four minutes, people tend not to watch it. And it's exceedingly difficult to try and boil a video down to four minutes, particularly if it's something really overly complex. There's a lot of like really over the top desserts, um, some really sort of grand meals that I would like to do. But the problem is it's very difficult to boil them down to that sort of three to four minute runtime for a YouTube video. And so, I've sort of put them on the maybe one day list and I'm looking for ways to try and shave time off making those in order to make them more palatable for a YouTube audience. Um, that being said, you never know. These things change over time. People's tastes change over time and maybe longer videos will become more popular as we go. I mean, certainly Coffee Time is a good example of that where I never would have believed a couple of years ago that a video that goes for nearly an hour would sort of get a fan base but apparently it does so we'll soon find out i suppose uh jai white hi dave i made your fried rice the other day it was amazing question one do you like iced coffee if so farmers union iced coffee which is at in adelaide uh is now australia wide and it's amazing so much better than Big M or Nippies. I have never heard of Nippies. So give it a try. I've actually had Farmer's Union iced coffee. It's gorgeous. Um, question two. Can you please try and make KFC crispy strips? And if you may try making vanilla slice. Thanks, David. Oh, dear. 
I'm going to tell you guys a story. Um, I'll start with the KFC strips. Um, I must admit, I've never tried KFC crispy strips, so I'll have to go out and try some and see what they're like and see if I can reproduce it. Um, as for the vanilla slice, that you've really hit a sore point, you probably didn't realise it. Um, a couple of, about a month or so ago, I was getting heaps of people saying, please make a vanilla slice, please make a vanilla slice. I haven't had vanilla slice in years. I want you to make it, please, please, please. And uh, there's so many people doing it, I thought, I'll definitely do that. And I went through a whole bunch of different recipes from my books and sort of, they were all more or less the same. And I thought, okay, fine. And it turned out to be the most disastrous video I've done in years. Um, I had everything ready. I went to go and get everything out to start filming the video, get the ingredients out, and realised I had no eggs. And I was like, oh, okay, so I had to go out and get eggs. I came back, went to go and get the square cake tin out that I was going to need in order to make this slice. Couldn't find it anywhere. I tore the kitchen apart, could not find it anywhere. And I was like, damn it. So I thought, I'll quickly go down to the local supermarket. They always have cake tins. I'll buy one there. Couldn't find any there either. They didn't have any. I went to another shop in the shopping centre there. Didn't have any. I ended up having to drive 25 kilometres to another shopping centre to find it there. Could not find it. Ended up finding it in this tiny little shop at the other end of the shopping centre. It cost me $30 to get this blasted cake tin because I needed one of a certain size. And I, and I had one at home. God knows where it's gone. It's just miraculously disappeared into thin air. Got home, thought, I've run out of time to do this today. I'll do it the next day. So I got all the ingredients ready for the next day. Went to go and make it. Everything seemed to go pretty well. And I put the vanilla slice assembled and everything into the fridge to set. And it looked absolutely gorgeous. Until I tried to slice it. And it just went everywhere. It didn't set. It was liquid on the inside for no reason, despite the fact it wasn't liquid when I actually made it. And the custard spurted out the sides. It looked like a giant pustule. It was just crap. I had spent so much money and so much time on this damn video, and I just absolutely chucked it. I had to chuck it in the bin. It was inedible. It was just, it was literally falling apart everywhere, and there was no way to serve it. Um, I was so annoyed by that, and there was nothing I could do to save it. And I, by that point... I had spent so much time on it, I had other things that I needed to get done, so I just had to basically sort of chalk it up to experience and say, it's done, too late. So I haven't had a chance to remake that one yet, but Vanilla Slice is a very sore point for me at the moment. I'm going to probably do it again eventually in the future, but at this point, it's on the don't go there, girls. <laughs> So we will get into the slice eventually, just not right now. I have to let the bad memories disappear for a while. <laughs> um, Wayne Hodge. Uh, thanks for answering my question about steak tartare. Um, brings me to another question. Over here in some parts of the country, bull and hog balls are, covered, are loved by a lot of people. My dad and brother like them. I've never tried them. Have you ever tried them? And would you ever try them if the opportunity arose? They're pure lean meat and they look really good when sliced up and fried. Um, I can't say I've eaten sort of testicles or anything like that. Um, but that being said, I wouldn't be put off if, if the opportunity arose to actually try it. Like if I actually went somewhere and they were serving it, I would probably out of pure curiosity actually try it. But I have no idea if I would like it or not. Um, but then again, I'm, I'm one of those people who will try things wants to see what they're like and you never know sort of I, I'm not one of those people who wouldn't actually turn around and say oh I'm definitely not going to try that blah 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 like I always try something at least once or twice before I decide if it's inedible or awful or whatever but that being said it's no different to any other kind of meat really it's just sort of it's got a stigma attached to it so to speak so yeah um uh as a productions am I while you were going through the supermarkets in Australia, what did you think of the portion sizes and prices? Did you find anything much cheaper or expensive than Australia? Um, good question. On the whole, I found that the majority of food items were actually quite cheaper than in Australia, but there were several non-food items that were a lot more expensive. 
Um, a good example was toilet paper. While I was staying over there, I was staying in um, uh, apartments. It wasn't actually a hotel as such, so I had to supply my own uh, toilet paper and soap and laundry stuff and things like that. And that was one thing I noticed while I was over there is that the toilet paper or toilet tissue or whatever you call it was a lot more expensive than what we pay in Australia for the same stuff. Um, that being said, the food was a lot cheaper. I mean, um, this one supermarket I went to, Ralph's, was a very good example. Um, they had roasted chickens, like rotisserie chickens, and we get them in Australia in our deli section of the supermarket as well, and they're usually around about $12 each for this sort of smallish chicken about that size. Um, in this Ralph's place, they actually had them already cut up into quarters, and they had um, one and a half chickens quartered up, so it's six pieces in a box, and it was six dollars. So, like, you get one and a half chickens for half the price of what we would pay for a full chicken, and it was beautiful. It was beautiful, sort of fresh chicken meat. It was absolutely gorgeous. Um, yeah, a lot of stuff like that was a lot cheaper. Um, I can't say I was a big fan of the bread over there, though. I mean, it was it was a little bit more expensive than the bread. In Australia, but then again, I didn't really like it that much. I don't even know why. I think it was because it had a lot more sugar in it. It was very sweet bread, but that's probably just a personal taste thing. But yeah, um, yeah. Other than that, yeah, that's that's basically the change. The differences there. The the thing. Most of the food was cheaper, but most of the non-food stuff wasn't. So yeah. <laughs> Uh, Emu Unlim. Hi, David. Uh, what are your thoughts on the recent news from the UK that frozen meals and burgers have been tested and have to be found to contain horse DNA? Plus a joke for you. Oh, God. Olympian Oscar Pesorius was keen on buying a new bathroom door, but his girlfriend was dead against it. Oh, God almighty. <laughs> Bad. Um... Regarding the horse meat thing, um, this doesn't shock me at all, and it's a good example of what happens when um, companies outsource food production to other countries because it, it cuts down the oversight and they don't know what's going into things until it's tested. And as far as I understand, and I'm only going by sort of... Um, only reading a couple of articles here and there, is it seemed to be a lot of the food was coming from... Uh, various Eastern European countries, I think it was, and there were also um, places like Belgium, I think it was, and where eating horse meat is quite common. But, um, yeah, obviously, when you're sort of having sort of the raw constituents of food items being sourced from different parts of countries and then being assembled somewhere else, there is obviously the likelihood you're going to get something that you didn't intend. So... Um, that being said, I think people are probably being a little dramatic about the whole horse thing. Like, I can understand if you were buying something, a beef burger, and it actually contained pork, especially if you have a religious issue or something like that. But I think the way people get hysterical about the idea of eating horse meat is really bizarre because, like, what makes it okay to eat a cow but not okay to eat a horse? I mean, who says that? What Like, it's okay to watch a horse running around in circles for money, but God forbid you should have it on a, on a bread bun with some lettuce and tomato and sauce. Like, I don't know. It's I find it really odd. But then again, I mean, it's it's up to personal taste, I think, is one of those things. But um, when people sort of get all hysterical about it and carry on, it's like, oh, my God, I ate blackie. Like, what? Who cares? Like... For God's sake, it's a horse. Like, you ate Mr. Ed, deal with it. But there are worse things. I, I don't even know why I'm getting into a rant about this. <laughs> I'm going mental. I don't know. How long have we been recording for now? 33 minutes. Oh, God, we're doing quite well so far. But, yeah, so, yeah. Um, I think, again, as I say, I blame the companies who are responsible for these things. Like, I think it was... Was it Sainsbury's? I can't remember that had all these things that had horse in it. Like, like really... If they're going to be buying sort of raw meat and stuff like that from other countries and processing them, they really need to have a bit more oversight as to what the meat is and where it's coming from. Yeah, just taking a handful of meat off somebody from overseas and saying, yep, yeah, it's definitely beef. Like, you need to have some guarantees there. They, their quality control clearly wasn't what it should be. Um, Georgia Bree Bourne. Hello there. 
Just wondering, do you like cheese? And if so, what's your favourite cheese? Cheese is so delicious. I love cheese. I love all sorts of kinds of cheese. Um, my current favourite is this really sort of beautiful smoked cheddar cheese that's absolutely gorgeous. I'm sort of, every time I see it at the shop, I feel the need to buy a little wedge of it and scurry it away. <laughs> um, I like all sorts of different cheese, though. Yum. <laughs> mm. Oh. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, I love, like, sort of cream cheese type things. I love brie. I love camembert. I love something that's a bit bitey. Um, I don't know. There's so many different kinds. I love a bit of Red Leicester. Yum. Uh, I don't know. I'm having a bit of a cheese fest at the moment. Uh, Sane78. Uh, where's the question? Uh, I was wondering if you will be doing a live hangout version of Coffee Time. Probably not. And it's a complicated sort of thing. Basically, uh, a couple of years ago, and this is a long-winded story, but trust me, stick with me. A couple of years ago, I was selected for a YouTube thing called YouTube Next Chef. And basically part of that was I was getting uh, lessons and lectures off various people via Google Hangouts. And part of the deal was I was contractually obligated to open a Google Plus account in order to actually be a part of these Hangouts. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, and I had to associate the account with my cooking channel, One Pot Chef Show. Now, at the time, I didn't think much more of it because Google Plus was still fairly new at the time. And to be honest, I didn't really have much use for Google Plus. I already had Facebook and Twitter and things like that. And an extra social network just seemed to be a bit of a joke. But I had to sign up for it, so I did. And because it's associated with the cooking channel, and you can't undo that. Once it's done onto that, you can't change it to another Google account, which I have a different Google account associated with the One Pot Chef blog channel, which is the one you're watching now. Um, if I could swap the Google Plus association over to that account, I would be able to do the live versions of Coffee Time via Google Hangouts. But because it's associated with the other one, if I did a live Coffee Time, it would be getting broadcast and put on the cooking channel and not on the blog channel. And I've tried to get this organised so I could swap it over, but there doesn't seem to be a way to actually do it. So if I could find a way of doing that, I probably would do a couple of live ones. But um, for the time being, I'm stuck doing them pre-recorded. But I also find that the pre-recorded ones are a lot easier to do because... Um, I can actually go through and filter the questions if there's anything inappropriate or if there's any sort of trolls causing trouble. You guys don't get to see the results of that because I can go through and filter it before you actually watch the video. So um, I can't control it that easily if it's done live. So probably it won't be happening as a live one for quite some time, but you never know. We'll, we'll never say never. Uh, Planet Trivoli. Do you own or rent the house you're living in? What about the previous houses you've been in? Did you own or rent them? Uh, I own this house. Uh, the previous houses that have appeared in my videos have all been rentals. So Brian and I purchased this house, but the other ones we rented. So yeah, it's, it's nice to be out of the rental market because it's a nightmare. If I had to go around sort of looking for somewhere else to live again, I think I would... <laughs> I hated it. I really hated doing that, going around sort of... Looking at these horrible places, it was just dreadful. So I'm glad to be out of that. The Copycat Chef. Hello, Copycat Chef. Uh, the missus and I watched three of your blog videos back to back tonight. It was the perfect background entertainment as we peruse the net. We love you long time. Oh, thank you. Um, based on your last show, I am now keen to try a Gloria Jean's Caramel Mocha. Oh, Mocha Caramel Latte. God, trust me. Try it. You will love it. Although, if I had a preference, I like my coffee the way I like my women. Hot, sweet, and black, with a little bit of prune Danish. <laughs> if you had to describe yourselves in coffee terms, what would you say about yourself? Um, bitter and bad for your teeth. <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, uh, strong and robust and very capable of opening your sinuses. I, I, I have no idea. 
I'm not sure how I would describe myself in coffee terms, and that answer just seemed deeply disturbing, actually. So we'll just get it quietly move on. Uh, Jake Chef one are you at any time planning to come to Utah, USA? And if so, would you? How would you feel about cooking with one of your fans to make his first video? Um, I don't have any specific plans to go to Utah. In fact. I'm embarrassed to say that I don't actually know where Utah is. I've heard of it, but I couldn't honestly point it out on a map if you paid me. So I, I think it's one of those middle ones, isn't it? Is it one of those middle ones with lots of rocks? I, I, I can't remember. I, I don't remember where Utah is. That being said, it would be interesting to do a, like a USA tour type thing. I would love to go on like a Stephen Fry type visiting America thing where he went to every single state to see what each state was like, and that was fascinating to watch. So I'd love to do something like that and do, like, cooking videos along the way. Um, yeah, so if I ever do come over to Utah, I would be happy to come and do a cooking video with you. So there we go. Um, oh, Jake Chef asks, have you ever tried dirty chai coffee or chi coffee? Dirty chi coffee, and if not, would you like the recipe? I have never heard of dirty chi coffee. I, I don't know what that is. I'm going to quickly type that into Google and see what comes up. Because I you piqued my curiosity there. Dirty Chi Coffee. Or maybe it's supposed to be Dirty Chai Coffee because that's what's coming up, Dirty Chai Coffee. If it's like a chai latte, I, I would love to try that because um, I like a chai latte now and again. I love the spicy sort of background elements to it. Uh, Louise Colon, I hope I've said that right, Colon, uh, besides the chicken in cola fiasco, oh god, what other weird food combinations have you cooked or eaten? Lou from Dublin, Ireland, P.S. I love both your channels. Oh, thank you very much. Um, I suppose, and I don't know if it was weird as such, but I, I made a video recently based on a dish that I tried when I visited Brisbane late last year for a YouTube gathering. And it was a chicken pesto, but it had avocado in it. And I had never heard of avocado being served with pesto before, basil pesto. And it was fantastic. It was so really, it was really, really yummy. And I ended up doing a video about that on the cooking channel early this year. Um, and it was absolutely sensational. It was so, so yummy. I loved, I've actually made it like three times since I made that video. It's it's become one of my new favourites. So, if you haven't seen that one, go and check it out. Um, uh, chicken and avocado basil pesto. Oh, with penne pasta. Yum. Um, what do we got here? Spasmaz. Could you please make a video on shawarma? Sh sh shawarma? I had one when I visited Malaysia, and I couldn't get enough of them. It's like a souvlaki, but so much more delicious. Shawarma. I, I've never heard of that. I'll have to do some research because like a souvlaki, that's an interesting thing. I'll have a look into that and see what I can come up with. Interesting. Uh, Yanni Hurt. Me and some friends have got a bet going on to see who can come up with the best date night with just spending $50 without cooking at home. What would you come up with and I know you're a sci-fi nut. Do you watch Doctor Who? If so, who's your favourite companion? I love the ponds. Okay, well, yeah, I definitely watch Doctor Who. Um, of the new series, my favourite one's got to have been Donna. I mean, Donna was just so much fun. And for without spoilers, it was a tragic ending. Um, spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. <laughs> um, as for date night... Oh, do you have any idea how long it's been since I went out on a date? It's been a decade. Old man. <laughs> very old man these days. Um, oh yeah, I haven't been on a date for a very long time. So when it comes to date night and stuff like that, I am so far out of touch. It's not funny. And yeah, my partner and I, we don't really do the whole date night thing. We probably should, but we haven't done that for a while. $50 without cooking at home. Um... I guess it depends on your age, I suppose. I'm assuming that you're of age, but I would definitely look into going to uh, any kind of sort of bar or pub that has live music because that's always a great night out. If you've got a band, 
doing live music and you've got a place to dance. Um, that's always a great night out. But um, there's heaps of different things you can do. But again, out, out of 10 years out of date with, <laughs> with dating, I don't really know. Um, I think definitely the live music thing is the way to go, though, because usually those sort of things are free and then your $50 is spent on getting drinks or nibbles or whatever. So, yeah. Uh, Mr. Butterworth24, what is your dream car? I have no dream car. I have I, I, I have zero interest in cars, to be honest. I, 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 I opened the bonnet. I have no idea what's in there. Like, like it, it could be run on, I don't know, pixie wings and Japanese magic for all I know. I have no idea what goes under the bonnet and quite happy to live my life without knowing it. Um, yeah, uh, I drive an old Magna that's about 10 years old and... She's a stubborn old bitch like her owner, but manages to get there in the end. Much like her owner. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't know. Like, if I was sort of like, I don't know, if I won the lottery and had to buy a car tomorrow, something new, um, I don't know, because I just don't know anything about cars, and I, I can't sort of say, oh, I've always wanted to get a duh duh duh. That being said... I really did enjoy driving that Dodge Charger in, in LA recently. I really liked that car. It was a lot of fun to drive and it was spacious and had a nice bit of mm to it. So I was quite happy with that. So, um, yeah, but I don't even think you can get that kind of car over in Australia. So I don't know. Maybe I could import one and have it modified to drive over here. So who knows? If I've won the lottery, I suppose I could do that. Um, Eight four six five two four one six two. Why does chocolate clog up if you add water or milk to it while it's melting? Are you a cyborg? Do your best Ramsey impression. Um, I'm not impersonating Ramsey. I personally think he's a twat. <laughs> I honestly like he has done so much damage to the cooking community. It's not even funny. I just find. Everything he does is just such a complete put on and yeah, am I a cyborg? Well, there's a lot about me that's artificial, let's put it that way, but that's another story. Um, why does chocolate clog up when you add water or milk when it's melting? Um, it's called seizing. Chocolate seizes and um, basically it's just, chocolate isn't meant to get sort of moisture content into it and when you do that it separates the the cocoa fats and the all the other bits and pieces in it and so that's what makes it sort of go sort of stiff and lumpy and stuff like that so always make sure when you're melting chocolate you've got it in a dry clean bowl you don't allow water to get into it once it's melted um you should be sort of fine but generally you've got to assume that if you're adding things to it it's going to do that so try to add other stuff to it like if you're making a cake batter you put the flour and stuff in and then add any other liquids or something into it because that way it's got other things to keep it busy. Um, that made no sense, did it? <laughs> I don't know. Glut. Glut. <laughs> Everyone forgot about glut? Uh, if you if you watch this far, make sure you write glut in the comment section. <laughs> glut. <laughs> I blame Miranda. She's broken my brain. Um... Beaner, have you ever watched The X-Files? I think you would really enjoy it. It's like a cross between Aliens and Law and Order. I watched X-Files when it first came out a million years ago. Uh, I enjoyed it at first, but when it started to get too heavily into the government conspiracy stuff and things like that, I lost interest. And I never even watched the end of it when they wrapped it all up. So I, I, I liked the first few seasons of it. It was more entertaining then, but I eventually lost interest. Um, Kramer Cobb, you made a lot of videos in the Tastemade studios. When will I be able to see them? We've covered that already. Yep, that's sometime soon. I promise to make announcements when I have more information. Uh, not famous kid. Can you say the word butter? I love the way you say butter. 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 Butter, butter, butter. Butter. <laughs> why, why is that different? I don't know. Maybe it's because Americans, they, they say it like, everything's like, I can't believe it's not butter. <laughs> I always thought there should be a religion like that. I can't believe it's not Buddha. <laughs> what the hell am I talking about? Um, 
Okay, um, next question. Sandon, or Sandon Godwin Welch. Do you like James Bond and what is your favourite movie and actor portray the character? Did you have good teachers in school and do you do any stand out for you as being really good or really bad? Lastly, you mentioned in the previous Coffee Time that Donnie Darko is one of your favourite films. Uh, what did you think of the movie and did it affect you in some way? Okay, first question about James Bond. Um, I don't mind some of the James Bond things. Um, I definitely liked Goldeneye because that was one of the ones that came out when I was younger and um, Pierce Brosnan was really great at it. I do like the modern James Bond films, the ones that have come out of the last couple of years because they seem to have preserved that sort of slightly cheesy aspect to it, but they've made it a bit more modern and it's not bad. And let's face it, I mean, Daniel Craig is... <laughs> <laughs> Ah, oh, glut. Um, <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, I, Goldeneye is probably my favourite one recently um, of the the James Bond franchise. Um, I definitely love the uh, Skyfall, the, recent, the most recent Bond movie. That was really fantastic. I went and saw that at the movies a few months ago, and it was fantastic. I loved it. It was great sort of evening out. Um... Did you have good teachers at school and did any stand out for you for being really good or really bad? I don't actually have really strong memories of my teachers at school, although I do remember one of my primary school teachers, Mrs... We'll call her Mrs K. I'm not going to name her publicly. And I just remember because she was one of those people who would scream at her students. Like, there's yelling and then there was literally screaming. And I remember my mother actually said she was driving past the school one day in the car with the windows up and she could hear Mrs. K absolutely going off at one of her classes. And it's insane. I still remember that to this day. Um, I had lots of good teachers during high school, particularly in my later years of high school, because um, I think when you get to further into your education, you get treated less like a child and more like an adult. And so you get to have a better interaction with your teachers and that's the one thing that I sort of remember um as for Donnie Darko uh I don't want to give away anything because like there are going to be people out there who haven't seen it because it's not exactly like a really popular film it's very much a cult classic but it's definitely one of those films where you can watch it several times and still discover new things in it and in fact I've actually enjoyed the movie after having seen it two or three times or more because I get new insights into the story and it's really hard to explain without giving away too much, but it's definitely one of those multi-layered films where you'll see it once and you'll think, wow, and then like six months later you'll probably watch it again. You go, I didn't see that the first time. Oh, now I get that as well. Oh, and that's connected. And yeah, it's sort of, it's great. I love those kind of films. Um, I can't say it affected my life as such, but it was definitely an enjoyable film. Um, Maggie12310 uh, David, how are you so gorgeous? Any secret beauty tips you'd like to share? And are you the positive, wonderful person we all get to see because you are at a really happy place in your life or have you always been like this? Um, beauty tips? Um, uh, honey, get the cataracts fixed. <laughs> no, ain't no beauty here. <laughs> As for the positive, wonderful person, um... I think it's probably the amount of caffeine that I drink these days that sort of contributes quite heavily to my positivity. But I'm definitely in a very happy place in my life at the moment, so I will definitely go for for that one. Um, yeah, so I like to always think that I've been relatively positive, but I don't think that's always the case. Um, yeah, so caffeine and sort of getting into a place in your life where you're comfortable with yourself and everything you've done sort of probably contributes to that. Uh, oh, 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 from breakfast to midnight snacks, what do you usually eat and what would you want to eat every day if you could? Um, oh, complicated. Uh, I've had people ask me things like that before, like if there was something you could eat every day, what would it be? I hate to answer questions like that because I would get sick of eating the same thing over and over again. So, um... That being said, and it sounds like such a strange thing, when I was a kid, we used to go to this Chinese restaurant down in Sydney, and I think it was called Ying Wah. 
and I have no idea if the place still exists, but they used to have the most amazing deep fried ice cream. It had this beautiful sort of crisp, sort of cakey, crumbed, fried outside, and the ice cream would be frozen solid in the center, and it was gorgeous. And I've never, never found a Chinese deep fried ice cream that's even closely compares to it. If I could have that every day, I damn well would. <laughs> but <laughs> I think we're sort of, we're talking about something that was about maybe 25 years ago and probably doesn't exist anymore. So my chances of having that every day are fairly remote. Um, as for breakfast at midnight, um, it's very different on different days. I mean, I, I generally don't have breakfast, which I know a lot of people say is very, very unhealthy for you. But Physiologically, I haven't been able to physically eat breakfast since my mid to late teens. Uh, I used to eat breakfast every morning. I'd have cereal and toast and things like that. But there was a time where it literally made me feel physically sick eating in the morning. I would eat like cereal or I'd eat toast or I'd eat fruit or whatever. And I would just feel nauseous and sick and miserable the whole morning. And... I tried eating different things. I tried having different portions, different sizes and different items of food. Nothing seemed to make it go away. I always felt like crap. And when I stopped having breakfast and generally just having coffee in the morning, I was fine. And to this day, I generally only have coffee for breakfast and it usually keeps me quite happy. I don't feel like crap all day first thing in the morning. So I don't know what that is. I'm very odd. Uh, lunch... Generally, I have later in the afternoon, usually about one or two o'clock in the afternoon, and it's usually whatever it is I've been making for a cooking video. Like like a couple of days ago, I was making soup, and I ended up having some of that soup for lunch, and I ended up having it for dinner as well, because generally, if I'm making stuff for a video, I'll usually have a fair amount left over for meals, so we'll generally have that there. Otherwise, I tend to go for fairly basic, simple meals. We'll have sort of... Um, chicken, we'll have salad or pasta or rice or something with it, uh, sometimes a stew or a casserole or something like that. Sometimes we'll just sort of go, screw it, we're called having pizza, right? Actually, we rang up for pizza last night and we sort of had that last night because I just could not be bothered cooking after the day I'd had. And that's one of the problems with having a cooking channel is sometimes you spend all day making cooking videos and then you get to dinner time, it's like, oh, can't be bloody bothered. I just don't want to do it. So, yeah. Um... And that's kind of how it goes, especially if I'm doing dessert videos all day. Like, no one's going to sit down and have cheesecake for dinner. So, like, I don't want to go, oh, God, I've been doing cheesecake all day. I don't want to cook, so pizza. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, as for midnight snacky type things, I don't really have them very much. I'll sometimes sort of maybe have a sandwich if I'm a bit hungry later on, but I don't tend to sort of go for the midnight snack stuff very often. So, yeah, I don't know. Hopefully that's an insight. Um, Erin Rice, where is your favourite place to hang out other than at your home? Do you like to people watch? Um, I'm going to sound like such a sad, pathetic individual, but I actually really enjoy wandering around the supermarket and the shops. Like, I don't know why exactly, and it's not people watching, to be honest, I don't really give a damn what people are doing, but I just find it relaxing, like pushing the trolley around the supermarket and looking at different things and picking out fruit and going, ooh, doesn't that look happy or whatever. Like, <laughs> happy? Glut. Um, <laughs> see, you're going to start all saying glut from now on. It's going to be the word of the, the month. Um, yeah, but I find that really relaxing. And then I'll go, there's a little cafe outside of the supermarket. I'll go and have a, a coffee afterwards and I can sit down and relax and enjoy my coffee and catch up on my Facebook or Twitter or whatever while I'm sitting there sort of having a coffee. And yeah, I mean, that's that's my idea of just having a bit of fun. And it's nice to catch up with people as well while I'm out there. I'll go and have a coffee with friends or whatever. So, yeah. Uh, Colette Sargent, what is Milo? Ah, Milo is... Um, I'm trying to think how best to put it. It's sold as a dietary supplement type thing. It's basically like a chocolate malt powder where you add it to milk and you can have it either hot or cold, like when you add like Nesquik or drinking chocolate or something like that. And it's got a slightly chocolatey malty sort of flavour to it. And it's very popular in Australia. Uh, yeah. Uh, WAW Productions AU. If you were an accomplished vocalist and were given the opportunity to collaborate with any artists... Who would that be and why? Cheers from Storky. 
that's a hell of an if, Snorky. If I if I was an accomplished vocalist, I I I am a goose farting in the fog when it comes to singing. As anyone who went to the Brisbane gathering, went to karaoke, discovered. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, if if I could actually carry a tune, oh goodness, I don't know. I would love to sing with my friend Damie from Melbourne, who has a channel EQV04 here on YouTube, and. She's been doing some amazing singing recently, and I love her voice. She's just really got this amazing voice, so I would love to do a collab with her and do a song, although, unfortunately, my singing ability is dreadful, and I would probably drown out her beautiful, gorgeous voice with my horrible uh, sort of type singing. <laughs> that was a little disturbing. <laughs> Next question, uh, Emmy Gallon, OPC, do McDonald's in Australia serve shamrock shakes? No. Um, I know what you're talking about. For those of in Australia who don't know what a shamrock shake is, basically they sell um, thick shakes at McDonald's or around St. Patrick's Day and they're green and they're called shamrock shakes. But um, we don't have them in Australia. I've seen them in TV shows and in movies and things like that, but we've never had them here. So... I'd love to actually be in America for that sort of time of year and actually try. So I'm going, ha ha, I've had a shamrock shake and you haven't. And everyone would think I was psychotic because that is not a point of pride. But anyway. <laughs> Laszlo Kavivi. Uh, I have a personal question. Do you always wear underwear or do you ever go commando in the kitchen? Have you ever eaten ostrich? Um, I generally wear underwear most of the time. I can't envisage a situation of not wearing underwear in the kitchen. Um, as for having eaten an ostrich, no, I haven't. I have tried emu many years ago, uh, an Australian version of an ostrich, but an actual ostrich, no, I haven't. Um, emu, it kind of tasted sort of like a, I don't know, sort of a smoky, chickeny, beefy sort of flavour. It was hard to describe. I, I I haven't eaten it since I was a child. We, we had it at some Bush Tucker thing many years ago, but I can't remember exactly what part of the ostrich it was. It could have been or the ostrich or emu or whatever it was. So, I don't know. I had a bit of crocodile that day as well, and that was quite nice. Um, Elliot Dodson, 50. Where would your dream holiday be and what would you do? Uh, anywhere quiet and as little as possible. <laughs> Um, I would love to go to some sort of isolated, quiet little holiday island thing. I recently saw an episode of The Amazing Race where they went to Bora Bora in Tahiti and it looked absolutely gorgeous and that would be wonderful to go for a holiday too because it was just gorgeous, incredibly blue water and beautiful sunshine and palm trees and beach and things like that and just quiet, beautiful, I would love to go there and yeah, hopefully we've got no sort of internet there so I could be completely cut off and I could just sit back and read a book and just enjoy myself. A little umbrella drinks with people in sort of glass, not glass, grass skirts sort of hula hula have a drink and yeah, whatever. I want that. I'm probably being incredibly racist to Tahitians there but whatever, that's where I'd go for a holiday and if I'm saying something positive, it's not racist. So <laughs> where am I going with this? What's the time at the moment? Oh, we're over an hour at this point. Have we got nearly to the end here? We've got a few more questions. Oh, God, we've got quite a few. Okay. Um, okay, so... Blah, bleh, blue, two. Chocolate or chicken? Oh, chocolate. Every time. How could you choose anything but chocolate when that's an option? Uh, Chadwick Norris. Who is your favourite food TV chef? Um, I'm assuming food TV is a channel... Or a, or a network somewhere. I, I, I don't think we get it in Australia, but um, when it comes to television chefs in general, probably Nigella Lawson is my favourite. Uh, Naruto Uzumaki. Oh, once again. What food do you recommend for a growing boy? Also, what would you recommend to gain weight? Because I'm a small kid. Um, I'm not sure I'm the best person to give dietary advice or nutritional information, but generally having a decent balanced diet which includes a lot of different types of foods and fruits and vegetables and cheese and calcium and things like that would all be very much beneficial but um yeah go make sure you have a bit of everything that's the best way of putting it 
Um, Makeup Lobber 586. Have you ever been to Japan or had Japanese food? Um, I've never been to Japan. I've had some Japanese food. I can't say I'm a major fan of things like sushi and sashimi, but um, teriyaki and tempura stuff, I love all that sort of stuff. Um, Fuller Grey 78. Is it just me or do I hear you call pasta pasta? And I heard Rob say vanilla. Is, it an, is this the Australian way? Much love from Estonia. Um, I guess it's the accent. Um, yeah, I, I would say it's probably the accent that's sort of slightly different to however it's pronounced in Estonia. So uh, I, I've had a few people sort of comment, particularly with the butter thing recently, it was a good example of how Australians say it differently. But who knows? Um, S. Johnson Channel. Have you ever been to Scotland? If not, would you like to go there for a holiday? Um, my... Mother was from Scotland. I never got the chance to go over there, but I would love to go to Scotland because I sort of want to go to sort of the ancestral home and see sort of what Scotland has to offer. I've heard it's some beautiful countryside there. I would love to go over there. Okay, guys. Well, we have officially come to the end of this extraordinarily long episode of Coffee Time, which is now currently at... Well, well over an hour. Okay. So much for trying to shorten these bloody things. All right, guys. Well... If you've got questions for the next edition of Coffee Time coming up next month, then please leave them in the comment section below here on YouTube. Otherwise, um, yeah, I'll just see you next month with some more questions and answers and random giggle fits and glut. Glut! <laughs> I swear to God, if you haven't typed glut into Twitter or something, I think glut needs to be the hashtag this month. So just hashtag random things with glut on Twitter and Facebook and Google Plus and everything and just see how far it, it travels. All right. Uh, lots of love to you all and see you next month.